Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. And in this lecture, we are going to learn how to create or use the match geometry effect with our lazy vertical grid in Swift UI. So this is the complete effect that we are trying to create. You can see that whenever I select an item from a grid, it uses the hero animation and it moves up to the screen. And then when I click on it again, it kind of goes back. So this is exactly what we'll be creating in our lecture. All right, so now that you have seen that what we will be building, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I need is I need some sort of an array to get display. So I'm just gonna use symbols, which is an array, which contains simply strings. And I've got this array from app code website. And the main reason is that I can use this and I can display the icon associated with the keyboard and the printer and the TV and the headphones and all those things. So instead of creating it, I just copied it from App Code website. You can actually read about it on the reference link. The next thing that I need is I need to create a lazy V grid, which is lazy vertical grid. It can have content and columns. Now it's up to you how many columns you want to create and whether you want to create the fixed column or a flexible column. Fixed column will have a certain amount of a fixed width. We are going to create a flexible column. So let's go ahead and create a flexible column. I'm going to say grid item and I will say flexible. And that's it. So just one column. Now if I go ahead and run the application right now, you will simply see placeholder being displayed, all right? Now I can go ahead and add more columns. And in this case, I'm also going to add a couple of more columns, but you can add any, any number of columns that you need. You can see that I'm adding a couple of more columns, two more columns, and well, three total columns you can see. And the first column has text uh, placeholder getting displayed over here, but I can add some other stuff so that it will get displayed for the other columns. Okay, we don't really want the text placeholder to get displayed. We want to display the symbols. So I will have to probably run a loop to do that. So let's go ahead and run a loop for each. We are going to go through all the symbols. Since symbols are simply string, we can use self, which is already hashable. And I will get access to the symbol. And now I can go ahead and display whatever I want. So I can go ahead and use the symbol and that symbol can be used as a system name for an image, and that will allow me to display uh, particular items on the screen. All right. So let's go ahead and make sure that we are displaying it. It's not a string, it's like this. There we go. And now you can see that all the different symbols are actually getting displayed. Their size is very, very small, so let's go ahead and adjust a little bit of size and also padding around it. And you can put any size that you want. I'm just gonna put a size of 40 and also a little bit more padding. So now it is appearing nicely. Great, I can run it, I can see it, it's looking fine. Now we will come to, like if I go ahead and tap on one of these items, what I want happen is that item is gonna go up here over here. And this whole grid is going to disappear. And the item is going to animate from this position to that position. So one of the things that you can do in Swift UI is to use something called a match geometry effect. And that creates what we call hero animation, H-E-R-O, hero animation. The first thing we need to do is we need to find out which item have you selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a local or a private state, and I will say selected symbol. By default, when you first start the application, no symbol is selected, so that's why I'm gonna put it as nullable or optional. Now, whenever you tap on a particular item, the on tap gesture can fire, and we can go ahead and say selected symbol equals to symbol. So I'm selecting that particular symbol and whatever the symbol you selected is going to be put in the selected symbol state. 
local state. All right. Now, in order to go from here to here, we need to create that particular view. So I'm going to go ahead and create a view right over here. It will be simply an image. And it will say that whatever the selected symbol is, it's going to display that. You can see that right now I'm saying optional of, and I'm basically unwrapping it. Not really a good idea to do that because when the program actually starts, this is going to be uh, null and no value, and you're trying to unwrap it with no value. So that's not going to work. All right. So we need to make sure that a selected symbol is not null. So let's go ahead and make that check. If selected symbol, we can do it in many different ways. Let's start with the most basic approach. If selected symbol is not nil, then we can do something over here. So I'm going to copy this part and write over here. Now we know it's not nil. All right. Now I can use many different techniques to do that. I can also do if let selected symbol, which is meaning the unwrapping, and we will have access to the shadow copy. So we know that the selected symbol over here will always be unwrapped version of it. Let's go ahead and select, uh, set a couple of different things uh, like the actual font. We will set the font. All right. Let's go ahead and build it. Okay. So this part, the top part, the lazy V grid, we want to display when the selected symbol is actually null. And this part we want to display when the selected symbol is not null. So let's go ahead and make a condition over here that if the selected symbol is actually equals to null, then we want to execute all the code and we kind of want to display the lazy V grid. Here we go. And else if we are over here and the selected symbol is not null, then we have to do that. All right. Now let's go ahead and say else if let selected symbol equals to selected symbol. Let's see that if we can just put it right here so that we get the unwrapped version also. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and now we will run it. We will tap on it and you can see that it is definitely displaying the selected item. Now, once we have the selected item, there is this particular view is getting displayed, but there is no way to go back. So we need to be able to make sure that we can also tap on this particular item and set the selected symbol to again back to nil so that the lazy V grid can get displayed. Let's go ahead and try to run this. Okay, let's see what's going to happen over here. So there we have a problem. Let's go ahead and make sure that we are saying self so that we point to the state property. So now we can go back and forth between the grid and one selected item. And this can be any selected item, as you can see. The other thing that I want to do is I don't really want to display the image in the center. I want to display it on the top. So now I have moved it on the top. But it's not really animating. So in order to animate, let's go ahead and use match geometry effect. And in order to use match geometry effect, we need to use a namespace. So we have to create a namespace, var namespace, so that we know that we are in this particular namespace and only the contents of this namespace we want to move because we are in a particular namespace. We will first go over here and we will say match geometry. And probably I've misspelled somewhere. G E O. Not sure why the IntelliSense is not working. So you can see that these kind of problems are still existing in Surf UI. You can see that it's really not helping me out, telling me what I need to be typing. But let's go ahead and see if we can figure out match geometry effect. And ID will be something unique. So something unique, the symbol itself is unique. 
So I'm just going to pass in symbol in a particular namespace, which is in this case namespace. All right. And that is the most important part that you have to make sure that your ID is actually unique. Let's go over here and we will do the same thing over here. We will pass in the selected symbol. Perfect. Now with that, let's go ahead and run our application and see that if it performs anything or not. Not really. I mean, it's working kind of like the same way. So it's not really doing much. Right? So this means that we may need some sort of a animation to happen so that it will work. So, what about if we put some animation uh, right probably over here? Animation for spring animation. These are kind of like built in animations available. And you can see that animation happens really nicely whenever the individual image is getting displayed. So, that's happening. But when I click on the individual image, it should animate back and it should place itself over there, but it's not happening. It immediately kind of goes back. So what about if we go and put the animation on the whole grid itself? So let's go ahead and put the whole grid animation and we will perform the spring animation. So that's one way of doing things. The one of the things that you will see over here is that when you perform this animation, when I click on it, it immediately changes its size and then it animates back. I think what would be much nicer would be to not change the size per se over there, but maybe change it on its way back. So let's go ahead and not do the animation over here, but we will put the width animation part of it right there inside the image tab gesture and we will wrap the selected symbol as that tab. Now you can see we have different kind of problems, right? We are doing the with animation and when you're performing with animation, it kinda looks like that it is not working correctly. Let's go ahead and also animate this with a spring. So we're doing the with animation and when you appear, it is doing a different animation. And now we can see it's a little bit much better the animation that we actually want. You see that it's animating nicely. There we go. There we go. You can see it's actually animating the on the fly. When you come back, it kind of animates that. All right, so there you have it. We have created a application that is using the new match geometry effect in Swift UI to create these kind of cool animations. And remember that if you don't really like these animations, you can always configure spring animation, default animation, ease in, ease out, and all of those animations, you can configure it yourself to your needs. But this is kind of like the very basic stuff. And you can see that how Swift UI has allowed you to create this kind of effect in not many lines of code, but it's very simple. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. Hey, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have also added a Patreon link. So if you want to become a patron, the link will be right there in the YouTube description. Uh, I have a courses about every single thing. You can see I have a new course on React. So if you are doing web development, you can check out the course on React. Uh, there's a course on Swift UI, MVVM design pattern, Rx Swift, uh, Swift for intermediate advanced developers. You have a core data course and also the async and await course for iOS 15. And if you want to learn about async and await and actors, you can do that. So I have a lot of different courses that you can check out. Uh, the best way to enroll in those courses would be to check out the link in the YouTube description. Thank you so much. And please also share this video and like this video. That also definitely helps other audience members, other people to find these videos. Thank you so much.